Doubling episode four, solo is a boss with this bare fucking hand. That's right, he did that. Let's see what Brandon had to say. If you are sleeping on solo leveling, boy, are you missing out because this man just soloed such a cool, well animated, big ass snake. That's right, no CGI here. Nope. Boss with his bare hands. And I mean, I've seen some badass. That's the funny thing because he was using a shitty weapon. This rusted, broken down weapon that we took from Mr. Gim that betrayed us. And then he realizes, oh, my hands are literally stronger. I can just penetrate the fucking armor of a snake with my hands. Raw things in anime, but this one's definitely the rawest in recent memory. Because when you have a character who you know is going to be an absolute beast, the show is called Solo Leveling. And already by episode four, he's probably at it like level 18, give or take. And this show did such a good job at showing how broken he already is. And this isn't even close to where he's going to end. I think that the whole snake fight was very hard fought. And it felt very, um, the progression was there. It was very believable. The character development in terms of his like confidence, not just in terms of his powers. But after we got to the snake fight, when he just casually destroyed that monster out of the gate, the, the dungeon break, and he just walks away and just saves the entire party. That was like, oh... Oh, he's already fucking flexing. Oh, he's going fucking crazy right now. And uh, we probably haven't even reached a percentage of the insanity that he's going to do. Because exactly. this boss that you couldn't cut, the, its scales were so strong. He rips that boy apart and strangles that thing with his bare hands. And that's all well and good. But then when you go to the surface and see a group, an army, struggling to defeat this golem mm. that he looks at and says, this is weaker than the boss that... Straight up, he starts shit talking them. He, he just starts looking down like, ugh, fucking e rakes <laughs> He didn't say that, but the tone of his voice and his perspective completely changed as he leveled up and as he came out of that dungeon and he just coolly solos that golem and walks away. That I just fought, threw a broken sword, broke through its defenses, something a whole army couldn't do. Yeah, this mm. man's built different. Full life. I feel like, maybe it's my headcanon, but the damage that Sung Jun Moon did by throwing that sword was pretty much 90% of the boss's HP and more and broke everything down. And then the rest of the party pretty much did a kill steal. I'm pretty sure that's what I want to believe. Reaction to today's wonderful solo leveling episode over on my Patreon. Cool, like, see my full link of thoughts. They're over there if you're interested. Wow, like, I expected something good this episode, but I actually didn't expect them to finish the boss fight, let alone show a second boss fight. Because they could have done a fucking cliffhanger. They could have 100% done a cliffhanger as Sung Jin Mu is about to throw a sword. Classic, right? Like the previous episode versus the Red Lycan, but they actually wrapped it off. No cliffhangers this time. That's great. They're all in the same episode. Something that's been rather odd to me is the criticisms towards cliffhangers when it comes to soul leveling. Because okay. every anime that's ongoing, especially anything with like a story or a lot of action, has cliffhangers. Like you're not but the only criticism from my end about episode 3 cliffhanger was the fact that there was no threat. It's a fucking red lichen with the metal jaw. And you're telling me, alright, it just felt jarring, you know? Cliffhangers are supposed to be super intense. The red lichen was like anticlimactic and jarring. I was like, D -d we don't really care about that, whatever. Episode 1 cliffhanger, I think was totally fine. I think was totally fine. You're not going to see every single thing in an episode because there's multiple episodes you're going to be watching. So cliffhangers are not only used to keep you interested, but most mm -hmm. importantly, they can't fit everything in a 20 minute package, right? But I've seen a lot of people act like it's it's insufferable. And I'm like, I, this feels pretty normal cliffhanger wise for me. But either way, I thought they would just do what they normally would do. You know, we'd see all the wolf and everything that we fight that we end up doing. And then we'd start the boss fight and it would probably cut away from a big moment. Yeah. Instead, we they get fall all the through. little miniature action. We get the full boss fight. And then they put the cherry on top and show just that. The cherry on top is the best part, though. I just didn't expect... Because, like, I thought the whole focus of the previous episode was the snake fight against Kasaka. And that was crazy. That was great. And I thought that was it. We got our solo leveling for the week. And then we wait until next week. It's like, oh, no, it's not over yet. No, he's going to come outside. He's just going to solo a boss casually and walk away. I think that might have been even more hype. Golem, which literally, what, there was like eight characters there, give or take? Okay, eight E ranks, right? Eight E ranks. Does that count as actual people? I'm not sure. Of course, our girl struggling with her PTSD. Can't say I blame her, but I... 
Juhi being useless as usual. I mean, the criticisms of, you know, you're a B rank healer and you're doing nothing makes sense, but I mean, with what she's been through, it's understandable that she has a bit of stage fright. The fact that, like, I don't know how long they were there for, but the fact that they were getting no damage in. And it's so interesting because what I really like what they did here with the end of the episode is that for us, the viewer, we understand where he stands at a power level okay. very well in relation to the world. But for I guess compared to these E ranks and these D ranks, we are pretty much C rank. Even the knife reward we got from Kasaka, right? The poison knife. Wasn't that like C rank weapon? Implying that we can use it at C rank? We're, we're there? For him, he has no idea. Because obviously, there's a lot of things quickly changing with him. So he doesn't really comprehend just how built different he is. Because mm. what we just ended up underestimating doing was his own power. That they couldn't break through that defense. Had he not done that little broken dagger sword throw, they probably would have had multiple casualties and honestly civilians and everything like that but from his point of view he's like wow that's kind of surprising that my broken sword broke through the defenses i didn't even think about that actually it was a broken sword it was a piece of shit broken sword that he was just almost done with and just throwing that alone did all that damage huh what would happen if it was an actual weapon, huh? What happens if we actually threw the dagger? No, don't throw the fucking dagger. That's a valuable weapon. They must have just clearly did fine. Like, they probably did 99% of the shield's health, and that's mostly on them, and then he did. No. I, I, I don't think the party... Wait, what did he say? 99% of the shield... What did he say? Sword ...broke through the defenses. Yeah. They must have just clearly did fine. Like, they probably did 99% of the shield's they, as in the party, no. I don't think they were doing shit, right? If H. Brandon is implying that the e rank party was taking the golem's defenses down and we just happened to take it over the top, I don't think so. What I, To my head cannon, the DPS is down on the fucking ground because they don't study the fucking boss mechanics. And they're fucking useless. Then the tank is alone in the front fucking aggroing and taking everything. Just begging for fucking help and typing and flaming the entire fucking party in group chat. The healers are fucking just trying to get these fucking DPS to get up but they're so useless. And I thought it was just a... I thought it was just a... What's the word? Uh, we, we were just stuck there. There was no movement until Sung Jin Moo had to show up and actually just take down the boss. Health, and that's mostly on them, and then he dips. It's not really like an egotistical thing, like, I don't need the reward. He generally thought... Not an egotistical thing, yes. And I feel like he already kind of like... He didn't look down on them, but his wording of, oh, E-ranks. <laughs> I don't know. Part of me was like, oh, is bro already... He's not power tripping. But again... The Jin Wu that we knew from before, I feel like is changing psychologically and physically. Thought he didn't do anything that impressive in that they had it fine because with what he just dealt with, it was way stronger, right? So from his point of view, if someone as weak as him was able to defeat something so strong, then what he's looking mm. at as a weaker boss, this whole army is going to do just fine. Yeah, he supports them because relative he's not to himself, be a dick about it, but he did. He just couldn't comprehend the difference of what he's currently doing and what they needed help with. And that yeah, yeah. It's again, it's, it's that like um, the gap in understanding your own power because of your own rapid growth at the moment. That's so good because it puts into perspective for the viewer where he's actually standing at a power level in relation to his world, but how disconnected he is from the entire situation. And that's brilliant because it's going to allow for some really interesting characterization and disconnect from the general people of his world. We see quite a bit with the kind of video game menu system in this episode. He has a full ass shop, though he couldn't use it, at least at the start of the episode. Maybe. By yeah, and there are, there's, like, there's like an actual show. Is, is there going to be like an auction house system? But an auction house is only available with other players, right? In like in any game, so he's a solo person. There could be just like NPC merchants and stuff too. I'm not sure. Hey, thanks for the common plasma. By now, especially because he's like 17 or level 18, something like that. We see how his levels are gonna work. So it's not that he's gonna be a full glass cannon, meaning that everything gets put into strength. 15 job none, title none. He didn't even equip the fucking title, huh? I mean, it is just damage against like wolves, but still interesting that there's a fatigue bar too. I hate fatigue bars. Still, everything, well, most of it's going to strength, and everything else has been just, like, um, additive increments of one per level, right? Then if you touch him one time, he's gonna die. His other levels are leveling up, but because he boosted his strength so much, his strength is, like, double any of his other levels. And if <laughs> Yeah, you can see the forearms. 
they they made sure to show us that he's he's has he's got very muscular forearms now. If you look at the very end of the episode, you see how like muscly his arm is yeah. anymore. So I think he's gonna be absolutely ripped beyond belief. And honestly, it'll be interesting to see characters who know of him because in this episode we get that flashback mm. he's the weakest of like adventurer of, of ever to world. exist like, he got trash he got dragged through the mud and obviously that's going to do a lot for someone's self-esteem so the characters who probably did talk he wasn't even talking about that lack like that self-esteem issue right during the fight against the snake he does the entire monologue him just fucking yelling about he's so tired of being fucking weak and he wants to change Right, that was so good. Talk shit, or just even if they didn't talk shit, know how weak he was. What they're gonna start saying when they realize certain things. We're already starting to tease that with the girl, but you know it's gonna be interesting where they take it. The bread and butter though was that animation because man, that snake fight. This is now the second time in an anime season that I've seen a giant snake that was hand drawn. There might have been true healing magic, right? Wrong way to use healing magic did the um, non CGI snake. Soul leveling also did a non CGI snake, and again, I think that. CGI is not the end of the world, but it really depends on what kind of anime it is, right? If the anime is focusing mostly on the dialogue, the character development, the non-fighting animes, let's say Classroom of the Elite. Yes, there are violence in Classroom of the Elite, but for the most part, you're not getting crazy fights every time. The focus is on the character interactions and the dialogue and the mind games. And those shows, I don't really care if you put CGI in, it's not going to ruin it for me, right? But in shows where you focus specifically on the action, the battle, the hype, right? You can't really afford to sub in CGI during really important moments. I keep going back to Ari Furata, but I just can't help but think that if this snake was CGI, would have I perceived these monsters as non threats just like in Ari Furata Labyrinth, where the monsters were all like, ooh, CGI golem, CGI bear, CGI monster demon. It's like, eh, eh, I don't know some 3d in this episode if there was when it came to that snake i did not notice it because that shit was blended seamlessly and i think my favorite part about the action so far is actually the impact so it's not just when a snake hits him in the stomach and throws him into a wall this man got bounced around the there's environment he drops from the ceiling to the ground you feel that there's times where he like gets bounced off a wall it feels like his spine breaks and he falls forward yeah i guess the way that sung chim wasn't bouncing off the environment makes the <laughs> makes the map more i don't know it comes to life like, the physics of how he gets tossed around feel so realistic so it's very easy despite it being a drawing, the fact that we are like, I feel that in my bones. I feel how insane he's being de like dealt damage. And it makes it feel so much more realistic. The music and the voice act yes. though, are the thing that tied that whole fight together. So I feel like this is a, we're, we're, we're beating the dead horse, right? Every fucking time we do a soul leveling video and we just talk about the voice acting and the soundtrack, but we do that because it is actually good. At some point, the glaze can only go so much, but I feel like Hiroyuki Sawano has been delivering on his soundtrack as he always does. But this new voice actor for Sung Jun Woo last episode, there was even a point where his like voice like dramatically shifted down a pitch. I wonder if that was actually like just like a one-time thing or if this is to signify that he's changed. I'm not sure. Regardless, all the voice acting, all the screaming, it's very passionate. It's very passionate. A lot of people are talking about it. A lot of articles being written about this guy, right? So I feel like he deserves the hype. Sometimes the music feels like Attack on Titan. You know those moments? It is. The reason why it feels like Attack on Titan is because the composer, Hiroiki Sawano, is the same person. Moments where like Titans would really start wrecking people's shit and the music would start building and you just felt like the world was ending. That's kind of how the music felt at multiple points in this episode. But the thing that really ties it together is this main character's VA. Last week, amazing. Mm -hmm. This week, mm -hmm. equally so. Like his rage, his determination, and his pissed off nature towards himself. The man be coughing up blood both- He is very pissed off at himself. Yeah, you can feel that. Like the voice acting, it's just so much like- Anger directed well towards himself and wants to better himself. In the recording booth and in this goddamn show, and you feel the passion and what they're going through to give such an amazing performance. 
Like, if you don't like solo leveling, you don't like it. That's fine. Not everyone's going to like everything. But there definitely is a vocal group who just simply trash on the show because it's popular. It happens with a lot. Yeah, of course. Because they're fucking losers that don't have any content by themselves. Says me. That's reacting. But it's a, no, the easiest way to get engagement, the easiest way to get any sort of numbers to go up your analytics is to fucking just say negative shit if you don't have good content because if you just say negative shit if you say the unpopular opinion about something that's super popular people are gonna interact with it and they're gonna start shitting on each other and it's just the cesspool and you're gonna get a group of haters that do support you for the vast majority it's just a cesspool of toxicity it's just easy ways to get views at a short but it's very short-lived and i think it's very short-sighted as well a lot of popular shows it's not an exclusive thing for soul leveling that they could wear like a badge of honor anything anything is that's popular in media anything whatever is super popular you will find people that are intentionally saying negative shit to rage bait 100 percent no, but you can tell. There's a difference between how people talk about things they simply don't like and how they talk about it upset that people enjoy it. And those types of people, we just should ignore because they're just trying to ruin people's fun. But I think for many of us, there's a reason why we'd be hyping this up. This is a power fantasy. No one's arguing that. It is a power fantasy through and through, but it is a power fantasy that is doing it Deserved. so well. I love the main character. I think that I love power fantasies and I can never get enough of power fantasies. And the reason that this power fantasy is sticking out above everything else is maybe the way that he deserves it. The progression. Like most of the power fantasy we've seen recently, the main character is already powerful. He just starts off at God level. And there is, a, there, there is interesting ways that you can work with that environment and you know still have a very hype. But... Right now, we're starting from zero and becoming a hero. And the progression feels like we're part of the journey. We're getting to see him slowly achieve amazing things and other people's reactions to his growth. All of that is really fun. I'm just a little bit worried about the future where people start to acknowledge his power. At that point, power scaling during power fantasies gets very difficult because obviously no one's looking down on you anymore. Everyone's just kind of relying on you. And at that point, you have to open up the world building and introduce different threats that are equally or even more powerful than, you know, let's say Sung Jin Mu. But at that point, the power scaling gets a little bit... Mm, it's not as clear anymore. And you kind of lose the the feeling of the progression that you had before because again it's it's hard to balance power scaling like that in, in shows like this in the future but hopefully they manage it, they manage it well i love his determination makes sense why he's so down on himself but it doesn't let him stop i would have teleported out of there if i was him <laughs> he stuck through it and it that's makes right him a very did. enjoyable power fantasy main character because you'll want to see him succeed and i mean the mechanics with the shop the menu system him on like his almost disconnect of what is reality for most people and now what is the reality for him he's going to be a god among men at some point and i'm yes. very interested to learn more about this world the he's already seeming like a god amongst my no he's a god God amongst E ranks right now. He did say that E rank party, but bro did look pretty godlike when he threw that sword. The portals, the gates, the dungeons, all that stuff adds to this. It doesn't feel shallow. It doesn't feel surface level. It doesn't hide the fact that it's a power fantasy, but it does it so much better than most. Let me know your thoughts on this week's solo leveling episode. I agree with them. Y'all know what to do. Please give Mr. Brandon a like. Subscribe to his videos if you enjoyed his videos. And every week, solo leveling continues to deliver, and I just wanted to let you know, this is just episode 4. In the grand scheme of things, does the snake monster matter? Probably not. Does the golem monster matter? Absolutely not. Implying, in the future, when actual threats arrive, the hype is going to be even more pronounced, but then I go back and even counter my own point and say, even if these non threat in the long you know grand scheme of things the golem and the snake monster even if they are basically mob monsters the fact that this show was able to take those mob monsters work with it and deliver such hype moments i think it goes to show that this show is pretty damn worth watching